Hi there, this is David and welcome to my retro review of Chrono Cross, released for the PlayStation in 2000. This game came out the summer that I graduated high school and I went off to college, and believe me, I was excited for it. Having played and falling in love with Chrono Trigger just four years before on the SNES, I had high hopes for the supposed sequel, but did it live up to its hype? Let's find out. First things first. Let me just get this out of the way and say that this game is a bait and switch. They bait you into believing that the game is a sequel to the masterpiece Chrono Trigger, when in fact it's a sequel to Radical Dreamers, a boring visual novel only released in Japan for the failed Satellaview add-on for the SNES. Radical Dreamers follows Kid, Surge, and Magil on their quest to capture the frozen flame from Lynx in the Viper Manor, and anybody who's played Chrono Cross can already see the similarities here. However, Cross is a much different telling of this tale, as it's a traditional JRPG rather than a visual novel. The story follows Surge, who lives a normal, peaceful life in the fishing village of Arnie, until one day he stumbles across a vortex which pulls him into an alternate dimension, a dimension where he is dead. So of course, Surge has to find out the meaning behind this, and in the process, save the world. To me though, the story itself takes a backseat to the world building, the El Nido archipelago is lush and full of life, with all sorts of creatures roaming about. The towns are vivacious, jam-packed epicenters of activity, each with their own architectural flair. From the Mykonos-inspired Terminus, to the quaint Arnie village, to the... Well, actually, I guess those two are pretty much it for towns. But thankfully, or unfortunately, depending on your outlook, those same towns are chock full of people who were just dying to join you on your journey no matter how stupid their reasons are. Seriously, in such a small little world, 44 characters just half cha go with cha. The vast majority of them are supremely annoying with ridiculous accents, and they're also completely interchangeable. They're just blank slates, so there's no reason to use them at all or level them up evenly. Just pick your favorites and you'll be fine. Speaking of leveling, it's done very strangely, because you don't actually gain levels or experience as you fight enemies. Most mobs will drop ingredients and elements, so fighting them isn't completely pointless. But it's still kind of redundant and, well, pointless. The only real way to level up is to fight bosses, and after beating each boss you'll gain a star level, which will give you random stats as well. Then you might gain a few more piddly stats for the next few fights that you do, but honestly, fighting here really isn't worth it. I do understand why Square instated the star level system though, because it does reduce the need to grind all 44 characters. But it also just makes all the fighting so needless, which is especially egregious considering how long even the trash mobs take to kill. In Square's effort to try to differentiate all these random ass characters from each other, there's a color system, where each character is one of six colors, and every enemy has their own color as well. So if you enter an area with a lot of red enemies, you might want to load up your party with blue characters to exploit their weaknesses. The same six colors also correspond to elements, and the system here is very comprehensive. Each character has multiple open slots where you can place all sorts of different elements, and you're not really restricted in any way about who can equip what. A red character can still equip as many blue elements as they want, so again, it really doesn't matter who you use at all in your party. The only thing that makes characters different from one another are their individual skills. Some characters can steal, some can buff and heal, and others can even doppelgang into enemies. Those scant few abilities can be interesting, but seriously, 90% of all the individual skills that you learn just deal damage. So again, the entire party member gathering aspect of the game is pretty much completely pointless because they're all just carbon copies of each other with an everyone can do everything system in place. While it might be fun to collect them all, it's meaningless in the long run. It's such a strange design decision since Chrono Trigger's told a story focused on a tight cast of characters, complete with side quests rounding out their storylines, but now here, You'll talk to your party members, get a line or two of heavily accented and stilted dialogue, have them join, then never hear from them again. There's not really any motivation to change up your party at all, because while in Chrono Trigger there were a plethora of double and triple text to discover, there's barely any here, and those that do exist are reserved for those A-level characters. 
the other collect em all characters don't get jack. Besides a very select few, they're all just cardboard cutouts, which leads me to the story. Chrono Cross's story is your typical save the world JRPG goodness, but because you're barely able to relate to the characters at all and you have no stake on the journey, it's all just so forgettable, and you really don't care if you save the archipelago or not. Considering that the game takes place fully within a tropical ecosystem, the developers still did a good job providing diverse locales to explore. You'll be going through dense jungles, deep swamps, hydrothermal wastelands, and ruins of ancient civilizations. Just because the game takes place in a microcosm doesn't mean that the areas to explore are boring. You'll pretty much see everything here, and as a late-generation PlayStation game, the graphics are well done and colorful. The characters are all discernible, and the enemies roaming the maps are easily distinguishable from the backgrounds. The spell animations are well done, and you can tell that the developers really took their time with this title, trying to make everything as beautiful as they possibly could. Just as the graphics are stellar, the sound is as well. There's a distinct Caribbean vibe to the soundtrack. You almost feel as if you're going on a cruise with a pina colada in hand as you traverse the different islands. However, some of the music is more relaxing than adventurous, and it has been known to put me to sleep. And other tracks just begin to grate on your nerves after a while, such as the random battle music. And speaking of random battles, as much as we'll try to avoid them because they're quite honestly pointless, you're going to have to fight some, and they take forever. From the loading times before and after the battles to the fights themselves, they just take too long. A problem that plagued many PlayStation games also rears its ugly head in Chrono Cross. Every single skill and spell animation took forever and has to be shown in their entirety every single time. Just because you can make a spell animation look cool doesn't mean that it should take ages. It's infuriating. To make matters worse, even just attacking takes forever because you have to choose the power of your attack. And you're supposed to use your weak attacks first, then stronger attacks to increase your accuracy. Because if you don't do that every single time, you'll continually miss further drawing out these relentless battles. And let's not talk about the boss fights and how ridiculously drawn out they are too. For most of them, in order to really stand a chance, you're going to have to continually cast elements of a particular color to turn the entire field into one color then blast the crap out of the boss with a powered up element or summon. And this just takes forever, and it's made worse because invariably, you'll cast like two blue elements, then the boss will come in and cast a red element like a bitch, completely screwing you over. It's such an obnoxious, frustrating, slow system. Just to add to the frustration, if, for some godforsaken reason, you actually want to get all the stupid characters and see all the scenes, you can't do it in one playthrough! You have to go through all the torture again in New Game Plus! But at least the developers realized how slow and boring their game is, so they granted you a fast-forward mode to use while you're wasting your life away even those morons. All told, at the end of the day, I do think that the game is worth a playthrough, if only for you to judge it for yourself. It's an extremely divisive game which did not live up to its predecessor in any way, shape, or form. It aged like milk, and honestly, I really don't think that it stands on its own two feet either as a good game. Many people say that Chrono Cross would have been good if it was just renamed, but I don't think so either. I think that it would have just been forgotten in the dustbin of gaming if it wasn't for its name. As a footnote in history, and as a popular, if extremely overrated game, you might want to give it a shot. But don't go in expecting greatness, because all you'll find is slowness and disappointment. Well, that's it for my review of Chrono Cross for the PlayStation. If you like this video and what I do here on the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive videos and early access to my content, or coming on over to my Discord to chat and hang out. The links to them can be found in the video description. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.